Coming up, we got a great phone for you for review. We've also got some headphones. Chad will be here. We'll take a look at an audio streamer. And Shannon's got her review of the new Acer S7. It's all coming up next. Time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Audible dot com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, visit audiblepodcast dot com slash before you buy. And by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to Stamps.com, click the microphone, and enter before you buy. yip a dip a doop a doop a doop a before You Buy is on the air, the show where we take all the great new products and we parcel them out to various members of the Twit staff for review. And we've got some really interesting uh, computers, uh, some weird devices, some headphones. But let's start off with phones. We always like to take a look at the newest Android devices. Ayaz Akhtar, host of TNT and Twit's Know How, has a review of the latest Samsung Galaxy Express. I'm Aya Zaka with Twit, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Express that runs on the AT&T network. One of the first things about this phone is it is an LTE phone, so if you're in that coverage area, you should get some really fast speeds if you can get AT&T LTE. You can see it's got a pretty big screen, a four and a half inch screen with a resolution of 800 by 480. It's got a 1.3 megapixel camera on the front and a five megapixel camera on the back. So this, this is a pretty light phone it's about five ounces it's actually 4.8 ounces and as it's a samsung you can replace the battery if you want you can see the battery there's the sim and the micro sd card slot for expansion this is running android 4.0 ice cream sandwich and as it's a samsung phone it's got the touch whiz ui overlay so if you like that you're going to like this phone if you don't like that you can always switch the launcher to something else so Samsung's preloaded a bunch of apps, but the biggest one's got to be S Voice. It's that personal assistant you could use if you want to do things like call people or find out the weather. You can use S Voice. Look at that! It's actually got all the things I was just yammering on about right there. It's not a it's not a command though. So thankfully, S Voice is confused because I'm not making any sense. What's the weather like? So as you can see, it's not exactly perfect. You're gonna have to mess around with this some if you want, but it's available because it's a Samsung phone. Now, like I said, it's running TouchWiz, which is that layer that Samsung likes to put on its phones. You can, you can just mess around with it all you want. The response is really snappy on this device. Touchscreen, very good. Gotta say, I enjoy the way it performs. I'm a big fan of running stock Android on there. So I found a launcher that's pretty much uh, ice cream sandwich or actually jelly beans launcher very similar to what I'm used to so we're gonna mess around with this and it runs really fast let's go to my gallery and see what's going on so the camera on this device is a 5 megapixel camera it does a good job hey look it's my keys let's take a picture of my keys it's focused it takes like a second not too bad I want to take photos I found it to be quite good at taking photos see look when it's brightly lit, works out pretty good. You can see this display is very, very bright. It's an AMOLED screen. And look, it's a cup on a scale. Time for the pros and cons. This thing's running a dual-core Qualcomm 1.5 gigahertz processor, which means this thing is really snappy and responsive. I gotta say, the screen is really bright. I do enjoy that. I could see it in brightly lit areas. And the camera, I found the quality of pictures to be quite good. On the con side, I've got to say, for a display this large, the resolution is a little bit too low. I had to turn the fonts to the smallest size to fit as much data as I wanted on there. It might be bright, but there's not a whole lot of things you can see at one time because it's 800 by 480. There's also that TouchWiz UI. If you like that, it's a pro. If you're me, you really don't like it, but then again, you can always get rid of it. On top of that, it's not the latest Android. It's running Ice Cream Sandwich by default and not Jelly Bean, so that kind of knocks it down a peg. So is the Galaxy Express a try, don't buy, or buy? Gotta say it's definitely a try. It only costs about a penny if you go to Amazon. That's really cheap. This is a really powerful phone for what you get. Uh, I gotta say that if you want a decent phone, this is quite good. It's not the latest and greatest smartphone out there, but it's pretty powerful, 
pretty cheap, and it does have LTE if you can get it at AT&T. I'm Aya Zaktar, and this was the Galaxy Express. <laughs> He says that as if he's going to blend it any minute now. This was the Express. Uh, thank you, Ayaz. Ayaz is the host of TNT, our daily news show, Tech News Today, every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on the Twit Network. Also here right now, my producer and the host of hey. OMG Craft, Mr. Chad Johnson. Hey, How Chad. How you doing, Leo? You've got headphones. I do. So I have headphones from M. Moda. These are sort of a high-end celebrity style, high Why style. What do you mean celebrity? Um, I'm, like Beats I'm kind would be celebrity of, style? I'm, yeah. yeah. And so these really don't have a celebrity attached to them. Right. But but they're sort of in that same market of, as Beats. They're they're looking, they're, it's more of a stylish headphone. Yeah. And it's it's more of a new headphone that w would be used to listen to something with a lot of bass and, and a lot of high end. Um, so I have two headphones. I have the uh, the M100s and the V80s. So let's start off with the M100s. The M100s are these over the ear style headphones. They have a really, really nice construction, leather on the top, leather on the pads inside the headphone. The drivers are really, really large. I believe it's uh, 55 millimeter drivers. And uh, you can also take, uh, it comes with with two uh, headphone wires, and these can be detached from the headphone. And you actually oh, that's have, interesting. You actually have two ports to choose, and then they give you this little stopper uh, on the other side to make sure that you're not losing any audio out of one one of the holes if if it's not plugged in. <laughs> now, come on, you're joking. They don't leak audio. Well, based off of I, I uh, it's, it's like so it's like a port in the fidelity bottom. blogs. Yeah, yeah, they 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 were excited block that it off. yeah you can. Block I like it. You can put right. it on either side because uh, right. I'm a lefty and sometimes I, I or depending on your laptop, maybe you have the wire on the left, but you don't want it to come in on the right because then it would right. have to cross you. So that's a nice right. I really that. like that feature a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then also the the whole sort of system when you buy it it comes with a, a, a leather uh, it's not leather it's like a faux leather uh, case you have some extra wires in here that that are kind of attached uh, you know inside of these nice springy this is you know, this things. is common in these high end headphones right. now and so like this has a, a splitter built in on oh, on cool. the end of the of the headphones two so people could listen to the same two people movie people could listen to the same thing yeah. it's it's just kind of a nice feature and this this one doesn't have a mic built in but uh, this one has a mic built in as well as a ah. function button for your Android. So phones you could use this as a device. Exactly. I mean, as a head, head uh, phones for an iPhone. For, for yeah, phone. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it also comes with, I mean, it just, I'm just, they really did cover their bases in, in sort of uh, nice accessories that come with, with the headphone. Uh, as far as quality of the headphone, the audio quality is something that you would expect from one of these. Uh, you know, sort of contemporary or, or new style headphone. There's a lot of high end and a lot of bass, yeah. and the mids aren't really uh, cared about nearly as much. It's what we used to call loudness. Yes. Uh, it's a profile that makes it sound better, especially at low levels, but isn't accurate. Right. Yeah. Right. And and um, uh, Brian may have. There's uh, there's a few blogs that actually have equipment. For testing this, and you can see the way, yeah, you know, there you and, and there you yeah. go. You can see at the end of, of a lot of bass the, response, a lot of bass response, and then in the middle it dips down, and and near the the end you get some some nice highs, uh, right there. But but this is you know this is what you would expect from from this type of headphone and what what that translates into when you're listening to music is if you're listening to something that's like techno or hip hop that's going to have a lot of bass it's going to sound really really good and i was really I, that's nice if you're going to listen to something like jazz or vocals classical or music. classical you don't want the You're cellos not, to sound louder than the violas. Exactly. That's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. So so this headphone just shouldn't be used for that type of listening it's experience. It's listening to pop music probably mostly. Exactly. Yeah. And rap. Um, and that is about it. For, oh, the, the other thing is that these headphones come with these really cool detachable plates. And uh, also you can detach this, uh, this top part here. So if you want to, you can style these headphones however you want. You can remove this plate. You can buy extra plates 
on uh, their website. And you can even custom brand your plates by sending them a Photoshop or an Illustrator oh, really? file. Yeah. Oh, so, that's neat. so if I wanted to have spent the, um, I forget, I forget the cost, but if I wanted to sp spend some money, I could have the Twit logo printed on this. Maybe I'm a DJ that has a specific logo for you know my my career, my branding. I could have that uh, added to the headphone, which I really like. Neat. Another thing is that these do collapse up, and it it comes in this nice case and the case has a carabiner it's just a really nice it's a pretty portable solution for an over-the-ear headphone uh and that's about it for the m100 so let's move on Pro to the oh you okay oh yeah yeah let's, you want to do pros and cons separately or do them for you know, all let once? me go ahead and do some pro okay, the okay. pros and cons on this okay. the, the pros are that uh the great construction i mean i really feel like these are a sturdy sturdy headphone uh, also, the replaceable covers for your own branding, if you just want them to be red instead of black, that's really, really nice. And then also that it is portable. I, I like the fact that it could close up and, and transfer with me uh, anywhere. On the cons, uh, the mic quality on this line is, is pretty bad. And when I get to the uh, V80s, I'm going to play a little clip of the mic quality just to show off. Uh, that it wasn't it wasn't good enough for me. Maybe a user watching this this will be fine. Uh, this mic quality will be fine for them, but for me it was a con. Also, these uh, uh, are a little bit tight on my head. After wearing them for a few hours, uh, it felt a little bit compressing my head. That may be a that, you have a giant head. I do. I do. Do no, you really? <laughs> no, no, I don't actually. You um, have a lot of but, hair. That may actually be a pro for some users, especially if you're a DJ, right. because you you can move quite a bit with just one one ear on and one ear off, <laughs> and it's not going to come off your head. But for a long listening experience, uh, it did become uncomfortable for me uh, just pushing my ears in into my head. Uh, and then the other con would be that this this is this you know isn't going to have. This is kind of for listening to one type of music. If you're a fan of that music, then it's not really that that big of a con for you. So that's the M100s. Now, the V80s, uh, let's move this over. These V80s are actually styled and branded as True Blood headphones. So if This you cracks me up. I'm a big a, fan. I love this show. If you're a fan but of what HBO's, makes these, is it just the red lining? So you get the red lining, you yeah. get a little True Blood logo right this here. This is the vampire show on HBO right. that is quite good. And right. You can even buy shields that have like fan Fantasia, you know, on oh, it from wow. from the, my from, favorite bar. Right. From Wait a minute. Here we have some. Uh, oh, look, we even have Fantasia. a True Blood sticker. This no, is from actually that's Liz. from Get Glue, though. Yeah, right? it's from yeah, Get Glue. Right, but okay. but you know, we can put it. We that's can hysterical. go ahead and. And it looks like it's uh, got blood dripping. Oh yeah. It. So so yeah, it has a few. <laughs> it's all in the accents, <laughs> really right? So so oh, here, oh, I'm, this is from Liz. Oh, this is dear, from Get Glue. I'll just go ahead and put that on my case. It has some funny things like there's like a little blood vial. Uh, in in oh, this right here, you know, and this is like a a, a a fake uh, you know leather, but it it's is this the cool. only it TV any... show that they do this with? This or is, their variety? This is like for some but reason, he, yeah. I'm, they I'm, just decided not... that's the one, huh? right? Exactly. Now the inside of this case is a little different from the uh, M100s. It has these little things that kind of come out with Velcro, and I actually really like this case better than the M100s, not to say that the M100 case was bad. What are those things for? Just yeah, so so what I could easily do is wrap up this cord, set it inside. Little pouches yeah, for and then, storing stuff, and, and then it secures set the, the phones in. a little bit better. Right, exactly. Okay. And, and Yo, it is more of a form-fitting case. It really yeah. is. Okay. I, I just like this. It, it, the, the case is a little bit better it, than... Are they essentially the same headphones? They It's a little bit of a different driver. They, these um, are a little bit more open mm. than... So you, it, these may be used a little bit more for listening to something with a, a higher mids, but uh, essentially they're, they're aiming for the same market. So huh. now uh, a difference is that they only have one plug on the bottom. You can't switch between left and right on your plug and they the accessory wire does not have a splitter on the end and it also oh. does not come with the um larger uh, jack connector uh that the this thing this is not included with uh with the uh v80s so uh basically it's around the same uh, they they are definitely smaller they're not really over the ear they're sort of on the ear and uh, they have some nice design quirks with with the true blood branding so the pros and cons for the v80 is that uh the um uh the the 
pros, let's start with the pros, is that yes, it has is booming base from even from these smaller factor uh, the uh, cups. And uh, these are a little bit more comfortable just because they're not quite as tight on my head. And you can see, you know, just in resting position, they're not squeezing. But with the um, uh, with the M100s, they are pressed up against each other. Um, and then the other thing is that I, I just like the case a little bit better mm -hmm. than uh, the, the M100s. On the cons, once again, the mic quality is not that great. And uh, there's only an area for a right line. Now, let's get back onto the mic quality because I recorded a video using my computer to show off what the mic sounds like uh, for each of these. It's just, it's a really short clip. Okay, so this is a test of the microphone of the V80. This mic right there. Uh, this is how this sounds. Uh, now let's switch to the internal mic on the computer. This is the internal mic on the computer, so just sort of a comparison of what a standard sort of low quality mic might sound like. Now let's move on to the M100s. And this is the audio from the M100, should be that mic right there. Uh, so just, uh, you know, you guys decide for yourself if this quality isn't good enough for you. On a Skype call, the second that I put these headphones on, people were like, what is wrong what with your audio? You? Yeah. So that's why it was a con for me, is that right. it, it really wasn't... On a phone call, you're right, that audio quality isn't going to come through. But if you're on a computer or on a Skype call, uh, that, that will be pretty obvious. So, and did you say how much? Oh, okay. That is something that I missed. Because <laughs> that's kind of a con. <laughs> with, with and Beats, I mean that in every respect. Yes, yes. Uh, Beats kind of started this with, on, in it's this market. Premium price. And this is a very premium product. Yeah. For the V80s, this is... The uh, True Blood headphones. For the True Blood headphones. Which could double for Dexter headphones if you don't look too close. Sure, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Blood, blood is blood, Blood right? is blood. <laughs> um, uh, these are $230. Okay. Retail. So it's fairly pricey. You may be able to find a street price for less. Yeah. For the M100s, $310. Yeah. Now, good headphones, I got to say, good headphones cost that yes. much. The question is, is what is a good headphone to you? And to me, audio quality is number one. And yes. these don't sound like they're super high no. quality audio. No, I, I, they, they do sound good. So my, For hip hop and right. modern. So my recommendation is try right. because... Truly, try out these headphones and see if the music that you listen to, if if they if you feel like this is good quality, go into a store, try these out, yeah. make sure that you would be happy. Uh, if I, I, I mean, if you want a really high quality headphone, um, I would suggest them, but it's not a solid app. And, and truly, there isn't there isn't a headphone that is going to cover everything. It's but you're just buying not it possible. also for the features. Right. I, but uh, I do think what's happened is that the headphone category, people realize that people can't tell the difference between good headphones and bad headphones and that you could sell fairly inaccurate headphones for the same price that you'd sell highly accurate headphones right. because most people have been listening to iPod earbuds for so long, they don't know. Right. And if you have it's better been, than earbuds, this will be a huge upgrade. Big upgrade. Thank uh, you, Chad. Chad, course. OMG Chad, hosts OMG Craft now twice weekly. I'm very happy uh -huh. to say. When does that start? Uh, April. In April. All right, April good. 2nd will be the first episode. And it's going to be a bit of a change to the show. He's yes. he's building his uh, set right now. Yep. I see poster yep. paints on your chest. Out of Minecraft box. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. He also produces Twit, MacBreak Weekly, This Week in Google, and is a much valued a producer. Speaking of valued producers, you may not know Josh Windish too well. He's one of our newest employees. Hi, Josh. Hi. Good to see you. Welcome to Before You Buy. Thank you. Uh, you've seen Josh and his parrot on many of our <laughs> other... No, it's a parakeet. No, it's a parrot. It's, it's a, a parrot. lovebird. It's a little lovebird. Yes. A little adorable Lucy. lovebird named Lily. Lily. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking... Oh, oh, you're Josh Windish. Yes, I was yes. thinking of the other Josh. No, I, I know who With you are. With the bird. With the bird. With the bird, yes. Lucy. Uh, Josh uh, is a producer for the Tech Guy uh, show. In fact, does our website and does a great job and does a lot of editing. TechGuyLabs.com. Go answer questions. Yes. Are we getting many comments over there? It's building. It, you know, the older episodes are getting more traction, good. I think. I so, like that. Yeah, yeah. We want it to be a repository of, uh, of good questions and answers. And yes. certainly I do a lot of questions every week, but... My answers aren't enough. We want some of yours too. TechIlabs.com. What did you your view? This is a very strange thing. So I mean, yeah, I, I wasn't quite sure uh, the purpose of it. I still am not sure about the purpose. <laughs> it's of called it. the Inreet Automatica Car Audio Streamer. Inreti is the company. Okay. And this is the Automatica. Oh, you pronounce uh, Inreet Inreti. I N R E T E. I get it. So uh, this connects to your car via USB. 
uh-huh. and uh, provides audio through your car stereo interface and actually have a recorded review. All right, let's take a look. Josh Wendish here for Before You Buy, and today I'm in my Honda Fit because I'm reviewing a product that's meant to be kept in your car. Uh, this is called Automatica, and what it's designed to do is uh, store audio on here, so music, audiobooks, podcasts, and uh, it's meant to keep them up to date, so keep them refreshed all the time, so when you get in the car, you just, you just go. You just have all your fresh audio content, especially with podcasts that you subscribe to. They'll just be downloaded right here without having to connect to a computer. It all happens automatic. Now, how it does that is through Wi-Fi. So this actually has Wi-Fi in it. You connect it to your home network or whatever hotspots you have that you want to connect it to, and uh, it downloads it that way. The actual device here is uh, very simple. It's just a black rectangle. Uh, it has a few uh, outputs on it, one of them being HDMI, which I'm not quite sure what that's for. Uh, Automatica says it's for future updates, so we'll have to stay tuned and find out what happens to that. Uh, it comes with two gigs of internal storage, but you can expand that with this SD card slot right here. And it has a, a, a port here for power, which unfortunately, the device does not have a battery inside it. So you actually have to buy a uh, separate uh, power connection kit. Otherwise, when you shut your car off at night, the device shuts off too, which is unfortunate because it won't keep your data up to date. It won't keep it refreshed if there's no power to the device. Now it connects to your car stereo with USB. So most newer cars have USB uh, with the car stereo. So if you've got a newer car, you're all set. Or if you have an aftermarket stereo, a lot of those have it too. Uh, this is designed to work just with your car interface. So you, you don't have to mess with a phone. You don't have any of that to deal with. You're just basically um, navigating through your content on this with your car's stereo. For some people, that's a good thing. For some people, not necessarily so. Uh, my car stereo only has one line, essentially, of text that I can read, and it won't even complete it. But, you know, if you have a, a larger screen display in your car, this may be better suited for that. Setting up the device is straightforward, but I did run into some problems, particularly with setting up Wi-Fi. Um, I had a real problem with getting errors that I couldn't explain and I couldn't seem to fix. Um, after a lot of configuring and, and messing with it, I was able to get it to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot. But again, since the device doesn't tell you that it's connected to Wi-Fi, there's no way to know unless you're using the software um, and you can see it on there. Once you've got it all set up, you're, uh, you're basically using this through the web interface. So you'll have an account with Automatica at automaticaweb.com. And this, the, the login, the, the actual web interface, is really easy to use. You can search for podcasts that way. They have a, a pretty large directory that you can go through. They also suggest podcasts to you. Um, setting it up with music is, is great, too, because you can just use one of the many cloud uh, services that it supports, including Microsoft SkyDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, and Box. And uh, you'll just set up a folder that you can put music into, and, uh, and then you'll be able to keep your music up to date that way. On to the pros and cons. First, the pros, it's small and easy to hide away. So if you've got a glove box, you can, you can put this in. That works perfect. Um, the web interface is simple and straightforward, and it works with several cloud services. The cons, there's no battery inside the device. So unfortunately, when you shut the car off, Automatica shuts off too, and it can't keep your, uh, your podcast and music refreshed, unless you buy a power kit that's sold from Automatica on their website separately. Uh, there's no way to tell if it's connected to Wi-Fi, and uh, it doesn't consistently work. So it doesn't consistently keep things uh, refreshed on here, and it takes a long time to sync those things down. So all in all, the Automatica, I get the idea behind it. You don't have to fumble with a phone while driving. You're just using your car's uh, stereo interface to use it. Um, and it's meant to just automatically keep content on it, which is great in theory. It doesn't work that great, though in actual practice, and at least not with my use of it. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this a don't buy. I'm Josh Windish with the Automatica for Before You Buy. Thank you, Josh. So it sounds like this is a very sp specialized product for somebody who has a very unusual need. Yeah. Because if you have a smartphone, you could do everything, right? Exactly. So if you've got a smartphone, in my car at least, I can choose whether I want to use the, the smartphone's interface or my right. car stereo interface, and I can just hide my smartphone away. Or if I have an old iPhone, which I do, that has Wi-Fi, I could use that, you know, right. instead, or an iPod with Wi-Fi. So for $100, um, I just don't see 
the need. Now, some cars like my Mustang do have powered USB ports that stay on even if the car's turned out off. That would make this more useful. Yes. Because at if least it would, it would stay, always be on. If it would stay connected. Now, I did also have problems connecting to Wi-Fi. So, and, and there's no way to tell on the actual device if wi if it's connected. Right. So, that it, it was just a frustrating experience. Forget so, about it. Yeah. All right. Not worth it. Thank you. Josh Windish, producer of TechGuyLabs.com. Uh, we're going to go over to the uh, other side of the room in just a little bit to talk to Shannon about her, her new Acer. You know, I got the 13-inch. We've had a review of the 13-inch uh, from Father Robert Balliser, but uh, Shannon has the S7 11-inch, the little baby one, and we'll take a look at that. Also, Robert is here uh, with something to review, but i got to talk a little bit about this. This is not a review. This is just a you will love it for stamps.com. This is the stamps.com scale I'm holding up. It allows you... Plugs in via USB. Now, this is so easy. This is a USB device that works. No batteries or anything. You just plug it into the USB. You plop your letter or package on there. And Stamps.com will always print out exactly the right postage. Because you see, with Stamps.com, you're buying and printing real U.S. postage directly from your computer and your printer, Mac or PC. Stamps.com is a really good tip for anybody who's a pro mailer. If you do a lot of fulfillment... You're going to love Stamps.com. It saves you time because you don't have to ever go to the post office to buy stamps or even to, to, you know, mail packages. It saves you money because you get discounts you can't get at the post office, up to 21% on express mail, up to 15% on priority mail. And it makes your life easier. It even fills out forms, takes the addresses directly from your address book, QuickBooks, or Amazon, or Etsy, or eBay, or PayPal, if you're a seller on those pages. It'll email tracking links if you uh, use priority mail or express mail right to your recipient. Right now, i got a very good no-risk trial offer you might want to check out. Visit stamps.com. Click Don't don't click the uh, special offer on the front there. That's only $80. Click the microphone in the upper right-hand corner where it says, Podcast listeners, click here and enter before you buy. All one word, before you buy, press go, and that $80 value becomes a $110 Bonus offer, $55 in free postage you can use over your first few months as a Stamps.com user. You get the digital scale. You get a, uh, a supply kit. You even get a month of Stamps.com free. Stamps.com. Use our offer code before you buy. And the next time you're doing any mailing, you'll be ready. All right, I'm going to leave my Stamps.com scale there. But I am going to take my Acer S7 because we're going to walk over and say hello to Shannon Morse, the producer of Before You Buy. Ah, uh, you make me do exercise, Shannon. It's not good. I'm walking over. Shannon is uh, Shannon is looking for a Windows 8 laptop, right? Yes, I am. I'm and, uh, on we the thought shopping we'd, edge. And we'd, we'd throw some at her. Hey, it's Father Robert Balliser, well, the digital you. Jesuit. Hi. He's also here. In fact, Robert's got his Acer S7 in his lap. I've got my Acer. This is like an Acer S7 convention. It's a party. <laughs> it's a party. <laughs> I first became aware of this Windows 8 laptop because of Robert, and I fell in love with it, and I've been using it. But we thought, uh, you're looking for a Windows 8 laptop. I am, yeah. I've been on the search for, like, the perfect one. I have bought a couple and returned them because <laughs> really? I didn't like them. Yeah, unfortunately. So you decided that you didn't want the hefty 13-inch. You're going for the... Yeah, I was like, I'm going to try the little 11-inch because we haven't even had that one on the show yet. It's really cute. It's really, really cute and it's very small 11.6 inches by or 11.2 inches by 7, by <coughs> seven inches wide and it's super skinny just like the other one the 13 inch and that nice? no it's a different cover though it is yes this one is aluminum it's brushed, it's brushed aluminum. aluminum it looks beautiful instead of the white i prefer so, this you know what i do too one. and look at the fingerprints this picks up mm -hmm. yeah exactly. compared to that beautiful brushed aluminum this man nice. yeah, it's really, that's a really selling pretty. point right there now, when I open What's the it resolution up, of the screen? Now, that's one of my biggies about this. So, it's it's a nice resolution. It's the 1920 by 1080. What? Resolution. You have the same resolution on there that I have on here. I seriously do. So, check this out. I have it on 1600 by 900. Or, yes. Yeah, you don't use it at full resolution. Is it too high resolution for if you? If I pull it up, let me apply that. That's one thing I, that is. That's one thing I it found is, with Windows is that oh sometimes... That's too small. It's too small for the touchscreen. Yeah. Exactly. So with this 11.6-inch screen, it is way too small for that huge resolution. It's great that it doesn't have a lip, though, whenever you use this, the uh, touchscreen. If I go back here, 
it's nice that there is no lips, so you don't have any problems pulling things over. And you do that a lot on Windows 8. You're sliding in from the yeah, left so and right the all the time. Yeah, so is not an issue at all. It has a really, really nice quality sound. It has the Dolby home theater in I was it. impressed by the sound. I mean, they're yeah. small speakers. It's not, don't think it's going to fill the room, but it yeah. does sound pretty good. The webcam's a little iffy. It's only um, 1.3 megapixels, so it's kind of tiny, but, you know, it, it works fine for Skype calls or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's pretty general. Um, the specs are very similar to the 13 inch one obviously so it's uh, the i5 CPU the the newest generation one of those it has four gigs of memory and uh, 128 gig solid-state drive and uh, father Robert actually mentioned to me that it is a what is it a, a raid they right. did a weird right. thing on this one. This mm -hmm. is 256 uh, gigs, and it's dual drives that are in RAID yes. zero right. mode, scary RAID, to they, look like one drive. They have a single card, so it right. looks like an MSATA drive, but it's got a, it's got an SSD on each side. And they're even on the 128 gig they're doing Right, that. they do it with 64 yeah. uh, gigs. Interesting. I found that to be really interesting that they did that in all of their S7 You lines. don't see it's it. I mean, there's strange. no way you could know unless you used a yeah. low-level disk tool and you said, hey, wait a minute, there's two drives. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they there. don't even really mention it on but the that's why it starts like up so quickly. Well, yes, I, I was just about to show that, but as you were talking, it started up. So <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about a nine second uh, boot mm -hmm. time on this mm -hmm. thing. How yes. about that? Same it, thing. Same thing. Yep. It's Unbelievable. Extremely fast. And of course, sleep uh, start from sleep is even faster. It's mm -hmm. virtually instantaneous. Uh, that's of course because of Windows 8 and power management now and the new uh, Intel Ivy Bridge. It's um, very nice. So that that is pretty great. So you have the same same result on the 11 inch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It boots incredibly fast. It's got a nice bright screen. It also has all the different ports that you'd expect. It has your USB 3.0 powers on. I love side. USB 3, by the way. Yeah, me oh, too. <laughs> so that nice. kind of makes up for the lack of drive one space over here. because you can get a USB mm -hmm. 3 thumb drive or yeah. external drive, and it's so fast it almost feels like it's an internal drive. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then it's got a, the micro HDMI right here, okay. so you can use it with a dual and monitor. We should point out these are these are fan ports. So there yes. is a fan on this, but boy, it's not very loud. Now, another thing to point out as well with the hardware is it doesn't bend all the way back. Like, like mine the 13 does. does. But I can't it think of a single reason why I would want to <laughs> use a laptop that does that. So they say, that is something to point out if they you get say, the 11 inch. Don't bend it all the way back. <laughs> yeah, don't think you can. And you they, what it. they say is because you can't flip this around is that you could be sitting on one side and say, well, here, let me show let yeah. me show you and it'll be upside. I don't really see the point of that. Frankly. <laughs> I don't really either. Yeah. But it's one thing to point out that is different. Does not do that. Okay. The keyboard is nice as well. Um, I noticed it's kind of soft and I believe that's uh, something that Acer is just known for. Uh, when I first started using this, it was hard for me to tell that I was actually typing on it. I mistype a lot on this keyboard. Yeah, yeah. me too. Um, and so that was just something I had to short, get used to. It's a short key press. It doesn't it go is, very it's deep. It's very short and it's very soft. So I make a lot of really mistakes. you can't really feel the yep. responsiveness mm -hmm. of it. Yep. Yep. Um, so my pros and cons for this little guy are, um, I really like that it's backlit on the keyboard, even though it's not very as responsive as I would like. Uh, the touchscreen is very responsive, though. I really like the touchscreen. It, it, it isn't it a beautiful nice. screen? And I can't believe in an 11-inch yeah. laptop, you've got 1920 by 1080. It's way too big for me. <laughs> the too many. In way fact, too it small. makes the icons and texts <laughs> almost too small. It does. And yeah. As of yet, Windows 8 doesn't really have a lot of fine control over how big icons are. Yeah. So you just end up running at a lower resolution. I completely agree. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's too bad <laughs> yeah. in a way that you have to I do that. I turned down the resolution. Yeah. Yeah. How heavy? It, it, let me just. It's only 2.6 pounds. Two points. I mean, that's one of the things I like about this. This is probably the thinnest and lightest. Than the yeah. Than the 13 -inch. These are the thinnest and lightest uh, Windows yeah. 8 uh, devices uh, out super, there, I think. They're super really, really nice. It's so nice. We could just, yeah. like, start juggling. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Have an S7. Oh, no, so I don't. This, this, like this guy is yes, That's what this is. It's a serving tray. <laughs> yeah, it's a serving tray. Okay. Did you have and any cons? I did. I had a couple of cons. Um, it's the, the resolution, I find, is a it's problem. So high. It's so high. Yeah. It's Which I guess is a good thing. It's so high, it's hard to see. Well, they're phones with small screens that have that resolution. That's so true, I guess, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of, it's almost like retina on an Acer. <laughs> yeah. And then the design I had a couple of small issues with. Micro HDMI instead of full, which I guess they put in because of the there's no room for tiny it width yeah. of this yeah. and also the power button on the side just like you <coughs> said father robert with your review mm -hmm. it is very easy to press this yeah. i i did i did it once and then mm. i learned from my mistake do not <laughs> i also uh, noticed the lip is a little a little tough to get up but it's not a big issue now this is cheaper what are the prices well, you would think this? it was so let me oh, show you not? yeah let me show you the website oh that's that's <laughs> funny maybe you just buy it because oh, you want it to be small 
Yeah, so and not I because think you're going to save money. If you wanted to purchase this, you would get it because of the size. It's 1149. This one is 1149 on the website. And that's the i5 uh, this version. This is the i5. Okay. So with the exact same specs for the 13 inch, you yeah. go from 1099 on Amazon to 1099 for the 13. Same price. Same so price. really it's no cheaper, it's just a different screen size for the exactly. people who want a smaller yeah. screen. So if battery I wanted life. to choose Oh, the battery life is excellent. It's it's like six hours maximum. That's I'd a say. little better actually than the than the big boy. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that's what pretty pretty average uh, yeah. user user base. If I'm using this a lot during the day, it cuts down to like four hours. Now the big boy comes for the price with two additional connectors. It has an mm -hmm. Ethernet uh, to uh, USB connector. Yes. It has to because there's no Ethernet port on this. Mine and does too. a yeah. micro HDMI to VGA, it looks like. Yes, is it digital VGA too, yeah. or is it, and it must be digital VGA? I found that weird. I would rather <clears throat> Who wants micro that? HDMI to the regular HDMI. HDMI. Yeah. And it also comes with a mouse and a nice little external battery. I that did like that. Three hours. The, the, wait a minute. What? Yeah. Okay. My, this one comes with an external, an external battery. Ba so I don't, we don't, do we get that? A nice little screw on one. You've got one it of those, but you had to pay extra for it, didn't well, you, Father? Well, these are rare. You can't actually buy these yet. So that, so that is a reason <laughs> to get the 11-inch. Yeah, it does. And how much more battery, battery life does that external? About like two, three hours. Okay, well, that's good to know. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because you can't get those for the <laughs> the 11-inch. And it's nice. It's a little screw on one. It is big and bulky, which is why I didn't I tend not to use those. So, I just say, yeah. yeah it's time to go to bed. I find myself not using it. I just left it in the package. time to stop playing SimCity and go to bed. And it's got a nice little cheapo mouse that comes with it. And it also comes with a nice leather case that fits this perfect. Pleather, yes. Yeah. I don't think it's real leather. Pleather, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the I like the mouse because it comes bonded. Or it's I guess a USB mouse, but it already comes bonded to the laptop, so it's ready to go right away. Yeah. So there's three different pointing devices on here. There's a touch screen. There's a trackpad, and you have a yes. USB real mouse. I think that's yeah. a nice touch from uh, Acer. It is. So. Buy, try, don't buy? So I give it a try um, specifically because for some people, this might not be what they're looking for. With because the of the size. screen? Yeah. Because of the screen. I'd say upgrade to the other one that costs the same amount on Amazon. <laughs> you know, I had, it's funny because I had an 11-inch MacBook Air yeah. and a 13-inch MacBook Air. Uh, same exact situation, and I ended up preferring the 13-inch because 11 was just a little too small. Too, yeah. But the difference on that is the MacBook Air 11-inch is a much lower screen resolution. You're getting all the screen real estate on there. Yes, Just a are. very tiny package. Well, very let's tiny. trade, and let's, uh, <laughs> let me just try that for a yeah, little bit. Yeah, let me just hold on to this wow, one, and this I'll is, uh, go hmm, home. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I don't mind this, actually. You have to have very good eyes. Hey, it's I noticed nice. you've got audible.com up I there. I do have audible. You know, I was shopping. A, do you Sorry. like, are you looking for something to read? <laughs> I am. I just found yeah. something. Vampire Academy. Good book. Oh, you're into vampires. Yeah, you're I part am. of Bike Club, aren't you? <laughs> are you in the Bike Club? Yes, I am. Yes, bike I thought you were. Com. Audible is a great place to go to get audio books. Audible podcast dot com slash before you buy is the place to go to get an audio book for free. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's the book a month account. Your first month's free. Your first book is free. If you cancel before those 30 days are up, <clears throat> you get to keep the book forevermore and pay not a penny. However, I suspect you're going to want to stay an Audible listener. When I fly, when I drive, when I'm on the Stairmaster or the rowing machine, when I'm doing the dishes or walking the dog, I've always got Audible playing in my head. Have you tried the new uh, Metro app for Audible? No, I haven't. It's on Windows 8. It's great. Audible's updated all of its apps for that new clean look. Oh, I just love Audible. Give it a try today. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And we thank them for their support of before you buy. I could get used to this. I'm almost now sad that I didn't get it. Well, good. You want to trade? <laughs> but did you buy this? No. No, see, I bought that one. If I trade, then I'm going to have to send this back, and you'll get to keep my computer. Okay. I was kind of hoping you wouldn't notice that part. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, Shannon Morse snubs, produces the show, but she also does a uh, security show called Threat Wire. I do, and on... I just started full-time here. And you're a full-time... I don't understand how that all works, but uh, <laughs> you're working two full-time jobs. ThreatWire is on TechFeed at YouTube.com slash TechFeed. Yes. And yes, and uh, we're going to find more places for you to do shows. Oh, yeah. I've here. started thinking of ideas Good. for shows. Good. Maybe a Windows 8 uh, show. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you got that laptop. <laughs> so do, do you think you're going to end up buying this one or another I, one? I it's think I'm going to buy the 13-inch after I pay for my taxes. I love <laughs> the uh, I love the S7. It's we, nice. It's we, nice. We, we ought to thank Father it's Robert nice. Balliser for that recommendation. Um, but I agree with you. I wish we had the brushed aluminum. Yeah. yeah. It seems like th they, they include the brushed aluminum and the ex extended battery... What's what's the deal? <laughs> uh, well, what's they the deal? they they understand that that 
unit is a little handicapped compared to the 13 inch, so they have to give yes. it a couple of uh, it's advantages. It's got some nice features, yeah. Two perks. Two perks. Yeah. All right. Robert is the host of This Week at Enterprise Tech. He's the digital Jesuit, and he stops by from time to time to review products for us. What did you? What did you? What is that you got there? This is a uh, solar recharging kit from Goal Zero. It's called the Switch Eight, and it combines a USB battery with a solar charger. Let's take a look. I'm Father Robert Balasser, the digital Jesuit, host of Twiet. This Week at Enterprise Tech on the Twit Network, and I'm taking a look at the Goal Zero Switch Eight solar recharging kit. Combining a rechargeable battery with a pocket-sized solar panel, the Goal Zero Switch 8 Recharger Kit is a mobile power pack designed for the average geek who wants a rugged charging system that can last brief stints off the grid. Acting as its own carrying case, the Switch 8 combines a pair of monocrystalline solar panels with a charging stick in a package that measures 5 inches by 5 inches by 1 inch thick and less than a pound heavy. The panels are tough, designed for the outdoorsman and able to withstand some serious punishment. The package integrates a series of loops to allow the user to hang the panels in the best orientation to capture the sun. Together, the panels can supply 3.5 watts of power in direct sunlight. The heart of the Switch 8 is a ruggedized 2200 milliamp hour rechargeable battery that is clad in aluminum to protect it while on the go. One end of the battery has a flip-out USB connector for charging the unit, while the other end has a standard USB port into which you plug your USB devices. A small button to the top of the cylinder activates a series of LEDs that lets you easily check the current charge state of the Switch 8. Using the Switch 8 recharger kit is simple. The battery can be recharged from any USB port in about four hours and then used to extend the life of your USB-powered gadgets. If you'll be away from a ready USB power source, you can use the solar panels to charge the battery in as little as six hours. The blinking LEDs let you know how far you have to go before the Switch 8 is full and how much juice is left in the pack. Goal Zero includes a short extension cable to enable easier hookup to your chosen power source. Over the course of a month, I used the Switch 8 recharging kit to power gadgets and gizmos using both external USB power and the solar panels to top off the charge. I found the Switch 8 to be portable, durable, reliable, and more than a little geek chic. It's a fine accessory for owners of phones, media players, or other essential USB gear. The Goal Zero Switch 8 recharger kit is available now. You can find it online for about $90. I'm a fan of well-designed tech, and the Goal Zero Switch 8 solar recharging kit is very well-designed tech. So let's look at the pros. The first pro is that, yes, it is a solar recharging kit, but Goal Zero was smart enough to make this charging unit a separate battery. That means that uh, most of the time, I won't be carrying around the solar charger. In fact, I'll, I'll keep this in the back to make sure that I have something when I'm camping or when I'm off the grid. But most of the time, I will be charging this off my laptop, off my wall outlet, off my other USB charging device. And then I'll use this to top off my phones, my MP3 players, my mobile devices. I like that proactive styling. The second pro has to be the actual design of the kit. This thing is tough. It's bulletproof. I've seen people jump up and down on these solar panels, and I've actually dropped this without even scratching the case. They understand that people are going to be putting their technology into difficult circumstances, and so they made sure it was ruggedized enough to survive the occasional drop or bump or drowning. Again, very cool tech. The third thing that I like about this is, well, the fact that it's just so simple to use. Everyone understands how this connector works. It, this flips out and you either use the uh, direct connection or an extension to plug it into your laptop or into that charger or into the solar charger. Now, when I look at the cons, pretty much the only thing I can think of is that I wish there was a bit more power in the power pack. At 2200 milliamp hours, I've seen power packs just a little bit bigger than this that have two to three times the power density. It would have been nice to have a bit more power to go when I want to go. Now, looking at the Goal Zero Switch 8 solar recharging kit, if I wanted to assign a buy, try, or don't buy, I'd say that the Goal Zero Switch 8 is a definite buy. I'm Father Robert Balasser. This is the Goal Zero Switch 8 solar recharging kit. And this has been Before You Buy. And as Red Link say, says, it looks just like the sonic screwdriver. Another, <laughs> <It really does. laughs> another reason. To, what if to I can make it. it to make that noise? Uh. <laughs> uh, how many, the only problem I've always had with solar charging panels is they, 
they just don't generate a lot of juice. Right. So right. how long does it take to charge up that whole battery? So realist, if you were in, in direct the sun, sunlight, yeah. it's six hours. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. So I mean, it's it, more efficient than I would expect. Right. They they've actually changed the way that they've made the cells so that even partial shade won't really kill your efficiency. That's good. But in typical sun, I mean, it's going to take a full twelve hours to give you a full pack. I used to have a little thing that you hang in the in the windshield of your car to charge your phone. It take four days to charge that thing up mm -hmm. so that you could charge your phone. It just didn't make any sense. Yeah. But they really designed this thing so that you charge it when you have power. Right. And then this is just like if you go camping or right. if you do want to top, top it off. Top it off, yeah. Right, right. Robert Ballister is the host of This Week in Enterprise Tech, a really great show if you're interested in IT or enterprise technology. That's Mondays, 12 noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, 2000 UTC on twit.tv. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see you. I guess you're moving out onto the uh, West Coast? I am moving in September. I will actually be in San Francisco. and uh, So we'll see more of you. Well, hopefully you'll see more oh, of you. Oh, I'm so happy. We're thinking of other shows you could do. Yes, yes. I think, I think there's some other stuff we could put you to work on. So that's great. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Thank you for joining us uh, on Before You Buy. If you want to uh, know more about any of these products, we put individual reviews and the whole show up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash before you buy. Tell your friends. You know, if you're saying, hey, mom, maybe you'd like this S7, you could say, go to the review, see what Shannon said about it, that kind of thing. We really appreciate it if you do that. You can also suggest products for review good lord we have is that how many subscribers 2681 yeah you can you can, you can that's great more subscribers please go go to before you buy and subscribe uh and uh, you can email us at byb at twit.tv that goes right to shannon's mm -hmm. inbox it and you does can, i read every single she, email she's always looking for other every things that people one. want us to review mm -hmm. i uh, i have the barnes and noble nook i'm going to review that i'm going to give the popcorn hour over to i as he can review that and next week and i'm actually really excited about this we have the uh, samsung chromebook ah yes the less expensive one not the, the pixel expensive. are you working on the pixel i am yeah we're all, all right, right. <laughs> That'll be, there'll be a fight around here for that, yeah. to review that. Thanks for joining us. I hope you come back again when we do this show. It's every Tuesday, about 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's around uh, pretty late, like 1 or 2 in the morning UTC on twit.tv. But, you know, that's why we make the on-demand available on YouTube and on twit.tv slash BYB. We'll see you next time. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. Take care.